Hey y'all, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well today and I hope you're all staying safe as usual. I wanted to tackle a serious and potentially triggering topic this week, which is the death of Hanakamura and bullying. More to the point, I wanted to discuss our general dismissive nature when it comes to bullying and cyberbullying as well. In addition, I wanted to talk about the different ways you can be what's called an empowered bystander. And before we get started, I did want to put out a content warning as we are going to be covering the following topics. Bullying, suicide, isolation, and depression. If you feel like you can't continue the video, no hard feelings. You can definitely feel free to click off. If you feel like you need to reach out to someone, absolutely take that time and do that. Self-care is extremely important, especially with topics like these. So with that, let's get started. For context, as many of you know, I'm a huge, huge fan of pro wrestling, and I was familiar with Hanakamura even if it was just in a superficial sense. She was good at her job and seemed like a decent person. She was on this Netflix show called Terrace House, which essentially I believe was like a reality show and it detailed the lives of those individuals that lived inside that house. And Miss Kimura was one of them. There was an episode where she got into a confrontation with one of the other housemates. I'm not going to show the clip, but you can view that on your own time if you're interested. But that ended up causing the ire of a certain subsection of the Terrace House fanbase. This was several months ago, and so for subsequent months after that, she was the subject of harassment and vitriol online, including numerous death threats. It got to be too much for her, and tragically, Miss Kimura died from suicide last month. Her death was felt by millions around the world, in the wrestling community and out. Calls for accountability were numerous, but unfortunately it fell on deaf ears. There was a brief conversation within the wrestling community about cyberbullying, the deadly effects it can have, but unfortunately, it lost steam when the next big story hit. That's kind of a consequence of the 24-7 news cycle. Miss Kimura's death felt like a stab in the heart for me. And I don't watch much Japanese wrestling, I'll admit that. But I've been the victim of bullying before. I know many, if not most of you have, either online or in person, so I'm sure you can relate to her story in some capacity. Her death made me think of what happens in schools and outside of the celebrity world, including the workspace. Our complacency when it comes to bullying, it really points to a cultural issue, at least within the US. Schools have been routinely employing counselors and social workers lately, which is a fantastic thing. But there's a lot of work to be done, especially since for so long, we have dealt with bullying in the wrong way. And it's always existed. Bullying happens for legit any reason. Looks, race, sex, gender, sexual orientation, class, disability, you name it. And I'm not excusing people who do the bullying, particularly teenagers, if we're talking about schools, but where are the adults in this situation? Teenagers and kids are so impressionable, so they see different ideals being promoted to them, and as a result think that they have to act in a certain way, or that others are less than. When someone who's being bullied tries to stand up for themselves, for example, schools will often suspend them for fighting back without looking into any context. It's called a zero tolerance policy or faculty may know what's happening but won't do anything. And so kids are impressionable, and so when they see that, oh, these adults are not gonna do anything if I try to speak up, they're gonna feel further isolated. And so I draw this parallel from Miss Kimura's death to what happens in school and outside of that celebrity world. Because many people saw what was happening on Twitter, but people in positions of power did nothing to stop it, especially those who work for Twitter and are responsible for overseeing their platform for terms and conditions. You see it on Facebook, you see it on Reddit, you see it on YouTube. People that are responsible for making sure that their platform does not become overly hostile do not do their jobs. And as a result, you can see people being cyberbullied and end up getting more and more isolated. They end up becoming depressed or extremely anxious. But it's not just Twitter though, it's not just social media, it's not just schools. We see this all the time when it comes to seeing someone being hurt, physically or emotionally, but we don't always do something to be an ally for them and to help them when they're in trouble. And so the person being bullied feels more and more isolated, that no one will ever be there for them, that no one will help them and they're scared to speak up because they're worried about being gaslighted or being labeled as a liar, drama queen, whatever. And so it's our responsibilities when we're on the outside looking in to help that person out. If we see someone being hurt, we need to step in and either have a conversation with the bully or talk to the victim and show support. No one has to throw hands, no one's gotta fight, and it really should only be a last resort. But words are so powerful, especially when you're showing support to someone who is being impacted. Something like, 
Yo, I saw what happened, and I'm sorry, and I want you to know I'm here for you. That's hella powerful, and that helps. Give them a space to process what happened and assist them in coming up with ways to empower themselves. Maybe they're just looking for someone who supports them too. And if they don't want your support, you did what you could in that situation, but it's a hell of a lot better than just standing by and doing nothing. If the bully is a friend of yours, or someone that you know, you can call them out without being aggressive. You walk them through what's happening and the consequences of their actions. Bullies often project their feelings and insecurities onto others, so it's good to talk to them about things like that. The two people don't need to be friends, but at least it stops the torment. And bullying is not just a school place or Twitter thing, I said this earlier, but it happens everywhere. It happens in work, in college, and yeah, even in gaming communities. So no doubt you're gonna see it happen, and no doubt you have seen it happen. And I think it's an important thing that when you see this happen, you don't let it slide. Don't assume that someone else is going to stand up and do something because they're probably thinking the same thing. It's called the bystander effect. And an empowered bystander sees something goes down and does something to help the victim. And anyone can be that. That's what this is all about, is being an empowered bystander. Doing something about a situation you do not feel is right. If someone's feeling upset and isolated or is being harassed, be there for them in whatever capacity you can. Don't try and convince them to be happy, and don't tell them that their feelings are wrong. Empathize with their feelings and support them, because at the end of the day, we legit do not know what that person is going through or why they're feeling a certain way. If they want to be left alone, so be it, but at least they likely know that you support them, so they may come back to you later, planting seeds. And that's what I want to do here, is plant those seeds. We're not going to completely eradicate bullying, it's just not going to happen, but I sincerely believe in the concept that if we can just make one person's day better, then we done good. That looks different for everyone, but it's always worth the effort. And with bullying, if we can mediate at least that particular situation and support someone who's being tormented, then we are in fact doing something about it. We can all do our part, even if it's on an individual level. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you all got something out of it. If you want to watch more stuff like this, or if you want to watch me play games like Baba Zero Death Cells, you can feel free to subscribe. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. See you all later, and I'm out.